create a GraphQL and REST API from your existing database without code. Let's discover Hasura, a free open source data API platform to automate and simplify the creation of API. With its array of features including a visual API builder, a DB editor, robust authorization settings, roles, actions, and events, deploying GraphQL and REST APIs become remarkably straightforward without any compromises. Before going through the platform overview, let's check the different options at our disposal to use it. The simplest option is to use the free cloud version on Hasura. It has a limit of two databases per project, 100 megabyte data passed through, and 3 million API request per month. To bypass those limits and have the data owned on our servers, we will use the self-hosted version by using our platform Elestio. To install Hasura with Elestio, go to ls.io, hit login, deploy my first service, then search for Hasura, select, choose your cloud provider, the region you want to deploy it to, and your service plan. It's the configuration of CPUs, RAM, storage, and bandwidth you need. I take this one and hit next. Then you can adjust your level of support. I will keep the free included one. You can rename your service and hit create service. I receive the email telling me that my instance is ready. I go and click here to get the password. On the LSTO admin dashboard, I click here to copy the password to my clipboard and I go to my instance. Then I need to enter the admin secret. It's the password I copied in my clipboard. I paste it. Remember on the browser, so it's not asked every time, and enter. As it is the first time we arrive on the instance, we have a getting started guide here available, but we won't follow it, so we can just hide for now. We will get back to the API section just after, but first we need some data, so let's go to the data page. We have two options. Either we already have databases we want to use and create an API from, if it's the case, we click on Connect Database and we follow the procedure to connect our existing one. Or if we don't have one available, we can create it directly on Hasura. By default, we have one database that is created. It has a public folder and from here, we can create tables inside it. To have a simple example to work with, we will create two tables. The first one, Users, and the second one will be Articles. We don't need a comment on our table. We can add the different column here, but first we can use frequently used columns and we have the choice between different ID. We will take the integer one. Then if we need created at and updated at, that way we have those columns set up correctly. Then we will add our custom columns. So email, it's a text, first name. We'll also make it a text, last name and a password, a text. Okay, then we are good with our columns. And the primary key, it's automatically set to ID, so we can keep it. And for now, it's okay, add table. Now our table is created, we can browse rows, insert, edit the relationship and permissions, but we will see it just after. First, let's create another table. Let's go back to public and create table. This time, we will create the articles one, like we did for the users, frequently used columns, we add the ID created at and updated at. And we will add title. It will be a text. The content of the article, a text too. A thumbnail, it would be the URL of the image, but let's put it a text. And we want to add the author of the article. And because we want to link it to the user ID, we have to select the same type, so it's an integer. Once we're good, we can add the table. Because we want to link the author to the users, we have to add a foreign key between the users and the articles. So it's from the author of our article to the ID of the user. And we can save. Now if we go to users and go to relationships, we have that suggestion of adding the relationship of articles. So one user can have multiple articles and linked by the author column. So we will add that suggestion. So the name will be articles and it will be our field to retrieve all the articles from one single user. That way, when we will create our GraphQL API, it will be very easy to have all the articles from one single user and the opposite way too. Now our table are set up correctly. Let's add some rows to it. So the integer is set automatically same as created at and updated at. 
Then we need to add an email, test at mail.com, first name John, do password xxx and save. We'll add a second user, test to John second do we and insert again. Now we can go to browse rows and see all our users. So we have that visual DB editor at our disposal to work with our API later. Now let's go to articles and insert ones. So insert title, hello, content, hello world, lorem, ipsum, thumbnail, http, image.com and the author is the ID of the user. We have it automatically created. So we will have ID one for the first user and two for the second. So let's add it to the first one. Let's create another article. Hello two, hello world two. And the author will set it to one again. We do three and also for author one and for author two, we'll have only one. I'm alone, hello, I'm alone. Insert again. So now if we browse our rows, we have four articles. Three are linked to the first author. Here we can see the relation, but we will be able to do it when we create our API. And then I'm alone attached to author two. Perfect, we have data we can work with. Just before diving to the API, let's have a look at SQL. You can write your request directly here and you can create native query that will run on your DB. So it's saved and it can be run at any time. So if you create native query, you can name it, select on what database and the query you want to run. Time to dive into the API section. Let's have a look at what we have. On top, we have the URL of our API we can call from any client or server. Then we have the request headers we can add to our requests to test it below. Then we can write directly GraphQL syntax here in that editor. But the great part is this section explorer that will help us create our GraphQL request without having to code. So let's select on the left users. What do we want? What field do we want from the user? We want the email created at first name, ID, last name. We don't want the password. When was it updated? Okay, we select it. Then we can go here, rename our query, users list. If we run it, we have all our users available. So in our front end, we can easily call users list query and have access to our users. But because we are using GraphQL and we define some relationship inside our users, we also have access to articles. So I can select articles and I define what field I want to get from my articles. So the author, it's already the user, so we don't need it. We want the content and the ID, the thumbnail and the title. Maybe the created ad too. We run it and for each user, we will have all its related article. So the first one has three article and the second user has one article. But let's say we want to create a new query. So add new query here. And we want to get all the articles, but to get the author of the article. Currently, we didn't define a relationship. So if we take author, we'll get the ID of the user. But let's start by getting all of them. If we look, oh, it's my query. So let's rename it to articles list and run it. Now we have all the articles, but author, it's only one. So it's not very convenient. What we can do is go back to data, go to the users, go to articles, go into relationship, and it's suggesting us to add the relation between the article and the user. So it will name the relation user. We will add it and track relationship. By the way, I didn't show you how to create manually a relationship. So let's have a look at it. We can name the relationship. We select the from source, but because we are on articles, it's selected by default. And we can reference it to another table. Then we have to choose if it's a relation between one object to another or to one object to multiple other objects. And we choose which column is related to which other column. And it can work on multiple columns directly. 
Okay, now we have our user relation. We can go back to API. It's automatically saved, so I didn't have to do anything. Go to articles list. And now we have access, if we look on the left, to user. And user is the relation to the user's table. So we can select what we want from the user. Maybe we don't need images, first name, last name, and avatar, but we didn't create one. Oh, but I was not on the correct one. I'm on users list. So we can remove user relation and go to articles list and set it here. Now let's try to run articles list. So now for each article, we get the user information. So it works both way. We get our articles list, we get the user info. And if we run our users, we can get all the articles information. In GraphQL, queries are to get data, but there are also mutations. So if we add a new mutation that are made to either insert, delete, or update data. So let's add a new mutation, insert articles. So the mutation name will be articles add. Then we select what we add inside. So the author, let's say it by default to one, but we can use variables, content, hello again, the thumbnail, HTTP image, title, hello for, I think. Now we have that mutation here but it requires a selection of subfield once it's executed. So we can go to returning and choose the ID of the new articles created. But now we can run articles add and we have the ID of the new article we created. We could select all the content and so on. Now if we run articles list, we have that new article that has been created. If you want to add query variables, you can define them here and add them instead of here writing the value manually, put some parameters into your mutation and define them there. So once you set up correctly your GraphQL requests, let's say we have users list, we will keep it, copy into our clipboard, we can go to rest. And from our GraphQL request, we can generate REST endpoints. So create REST, we paste our GraphQL request. Name is user list, so it's automatically detected from the GraphQL query. We don't need a description. We also have a URL path that has been defined automatically, but we can edit it if we need to. The method that works for this path, it's a get one, because it's a getter of the users. We hit create and if we try to just copy it into our browser and run it into a new tab, we will have the error that we need the Hasura access key. This is because by default, if you look at GraphQL in the request header, we have that Hasura admin secret that is always added to our request. So let's add it to, so I can go to headers, add a new key for Hasura admin secret and I need the URL of our REST API endpoint. Then I paste the address. We have our header. I hit send. And now I have this REST endpoint available to call from my front end or back end. But if it's from the front end, we don't want to use our Hasura admin secret. So we can use the authentication system from Hasura. The documentation explains how it works. You can create a JWT token or use a webhook to authenticate a service. Then we can define permissions, we will see just after, and then we will have access to our requests, so database. So there are three pages of documentation, one to explain how work JWT, one for setting up the permission, and one to have access to roles and session variables. Let's go to configuring permissions. And you can see there is that interface to edit roles and permission for one single table. If we go back to our data here, and we go to our users, we go to permissions, and now we have only the admin that is able to modify a user. But let's say we have the owner role, which is the one that created that user, the one identified as this user. It will be allowed to update the user because it will be automatically identified as the owner in our JWT token. So we can add custom check. We want that the ID is equal 
to Xhazura ID. That way, we are sure that the one that is trying to update our user is the actual user and not another one trying to update another user. We can add post update check. For example, you can say, we don't want the user to modify the email to one that already exists. But you can also say the user can only modify the first name, last name, and its password. So that way there will be no ID or email conflict. Then you save the permission. And from this page, you can manage easily permissions without having to go to your code and handle all that logic. It's already in the database structure. Now let's have a look at actions. It's a powerful feature when you want to go beyond what simple REST and GraphQL requests can provide you. I won't cover it in this platform overview, but you have the documentation that guide you with a video and some explanation on how it works. Then you have access to remote schema. And the difference is with data, we could connect external databases. But with remote schema, we can connect external GraphQL API directly into our Hasura GraphQL API and merge them to have one big API available for our clients and backends. To add one, you just have to click on Add, name it, enter the URL of your GraphQL API, define some settings as the server timeout, and the different headers you need to. For example, if it's another Hasura one, you will need to add the admin secret key of Hasura. And finally, we have the events section, because your API, sometimes it needs to be called by something else than just the user doing an action. Maybe you want to run a job every morning to do some calculation, or after an article is uploaded, to generate the different thumbnail size, then you would need to create an event to be performed on those type of action. So let's create one. We could name it article created. It's when it happened on an article. When one is inserted or updated, we only listen, for example, to the thumbnail. And if there is a change on the thumbnail, then we will call our handler that will be in charge of generating the different thumbnail. By doing this, we can create really advanced logic. So this one is an event trigger. It's when something happened on the database. But you can also define cron triggers. It's to be run at a specified time. Let's hit create. Same, you can name it. You can define what handler will be called, so what function, and use a cron expression to define when it will be called. So for example, every minute is the one we see here, every 10 minutes, every day at midnight, each first day of the month. You can find different expression on Google if you need a specific one or ask ChatGPT. You can also add a payload to your handler. For example, you can say is scheduled job to true. So you will know in your handler that it's the scheduled job that is executing this handler and not a regular user. And you can also define one off scheduled event. Let's say you have one newsletter to send. You want to define a specific date. You will be able to schedule the event at that specific date. And because you don't want to run it every week or every day, you don't want to use a cron triggers, but a one off scheduled event. Thank you for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this overview of Hasura. If it's the case, please hit the like button to help our channel grow and be more visible to other open source lovers. If you have any question or are looking for a specific open source software, let us know in the comments or join our Discord community. The link is in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming platform overviews. You can also continue discovering great free open source tools by watching our existing videos available here.